Hey, Quinn, how are you? I'm doing well. How are you? I'm good. I'm so excited to get to speak to you. Now, there is a slight delay, so we'll accommodate for that by speaking slow and uh, <laughs> figuring it out. Uh, where are you? Yeah. I'm in St. Louis, Missouri right now. Nice. And it's summer there, too, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I really wanted to connect with you. I saw your work on Instagram, which is where I see most of the work that I connect to and gravitate to. And uh, you're really talented. You have a really great way of painting that I don't see very often. Uh, you know, people usually stay away from uh, realism. And I think you have this really great mix of realism with the beautiful textures. How did you arrive at that? Thanks. Um... Oh, I don't know. I've been really trying to combine a couple different things. Um, I've always kind of gravitated towards more realistic things um, ever since I've really started like drawing. Uh, but when it comes to like the different textures and stuff, it's just been like a, I guess the destination's taken a while. I've been really like uh, throughout college, I used to paint like super thin and stuff and since I've been using acrylic I've been adding on more layers uh, in order to kind of raise the depth and the the uh, the texture of the paint so that that's kind of where it's come from uh, just this long process I guess of figuring out how to how to do that yeah you mix uh, really vivid colors with again this kind of classic uh, style of painting which is a really nice balance uh, how um, it almost looks collagey, and I see that you collage as well. Mm -hmm. how, did, how does that work into your process? Yeah, so I think collage is kind of like the, the starting point for me. Um, I usually will make like a small collage of the painting before I start painting, or uh, before even that, I'll like work it out on Photoshop and then kind of have ideas of where the mixed media is going to come in. Uh, so I'll usually have like an idea of like, hey, I'm going to use like bean paper or uh, like made in USA stickers or something like that here uh, and kind of simplify certain areas. Um, and so that's kind of where it starts. And then as I'm going along, I'll, I'll start adding those elements in the painting and then painting on top of those. So it kind of just all blends together. That's so cool. I love that. I used to paint now I just make collages exclusively but my collages were always the sketches from my paintings and it just gives you so much room to explore and it's non-committal <laughs> you know it's like low mm -hmm. risk and high reward uh, that's a great yeah. practice tell me a little bit about the work that you do what is it about so I guess ultimately it's really about me reconnecting to my heritage of being Nicaraguan um, I'm half Nicaraguan, and I, after I was uh, born, I lived in Nicaragua for five years, and then we came back up to the United States. So it, in that process, and since I've been living here the majority of that time, uh, I've lost, I feel like, what it means to be Nicaraguan. Uh, and so this has been, I guess, this process and everything through the paint uh, has been a reconnection to that heritage um, as well. And that's, that's just kind of like the personal side, I guess, to me, but also there's showing, um, I guess, these, these people, these working people, giving them a higher platform than you would normally see. Cause you like, you wouldn't see these kind of people usually in like galleries and museums. So that's, that's another aspect to it as well. That's very cool. So how old were you when you lived in Nicaragua? Uh, so after I was born, I moved down there and I was there till I was five. Wow. So, so a lot of your childhood memories, the, the nostalgia is Nicaragua, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Do you go often now? So it's kind of expensive for us. Uh, St. Louis used to be like a Southwest hub and now it's not anymore. So it's a little harder to get down there. Uh, so it's, I've tried, like, in my adulthood, I've tried to go every couple years, but it usually is about every four years, so it's been oh, so kind of hard. That's awesome. And you speak the language? 
Mostly. It was my mother tongue, but since moving up here, it's, uh, there's not a, like, a lot of Latinos in St. Louis, so I've gradually lost it. But I'm, I, could, I can get by. Nice. I can most, you know. Absolutely. So, yeah. so you say that this work that you're doing right now is kind of a reconnection to it. What have been some of the things that surprised you in that con reconnecting with your culture and heritage through the work? Um, so a big thing I think is like the differences in cultures for me, like here and in Nicaragua, you know, like here, not a lot of people wash clothes by hands or, you know, you know, just like uh, things like that. Um, like another, like one of my paintings, uh, people don't cook with the lights off. The lights won't just go off like that while you're cooking dinner. So, uh, it's just been, an interesting thing to just like see the two different cultures uh, and being a part of those. And yeah, just like reconnecting to that side, seeing all these things that are happening that don't usually happen here. So I posted uh, the painting that you made of a person washing by hand on Instagram and it got a lot of responses. People were really had a nostalgic response to it. They're like, oh my God, I still have one of those behind, you know, behind my house and yeah. I still use that because it's the best way to clean or to wash my clothes. Um, and I'm, I'm uh, Mexican, but I was born in LA, so I'm, I'm very uh, Americanized in that sense. But my husband is from the Dominican Republic. And when I went, it was like this education of like living in El Campo and seeing this technology, you know, this really authentic experience of like, this is how we do it here. Um, and yeah, and I see people's connection to these things that, that really mean a lot, right? And even the lessons that you get from not cooking with the lights on, <laughs> you know, like how does that translate to people there? How, um, how has your work been received in St. Louis if there is no, uh, not a large Latino community? It's been received well, I think. I think people respond to the colors a lot. They see these bright colors and they really like those. Um, but at the same time, like, so my mom likes to post these paintings too because, you know, she's proud of the nice. sun and all that stuff. <laughs> so uh, she posted that painting that you were talking about. And uh, a couple of her friends that are, you know, like they're older and it's like, oh, yeah, like my grandma used to wash clothes like that. Um, so... I think there is a sort of connection, even though it's the cultural differences are, you know, it's, it's, it's different right now. But um, I think people have been uh, connecting to it. They've been connecting to the different colors and shapes. Uh, just And the fact that it's just like working class people, I think you a working class person can connect to these working class things. Oh, it's amazing. Yeah. Um, how has it been for you during COVID? Are you, do you have a studio at home? Yeah, I have a studio in my basement. Nice. Uh, it's kind of messy right now because I'm, I'm finishing up all the stuff for the show uh, coming up in September, so like really soon. Um, and I also have to move studios. I'm starting grad school uh, next month, so I have to get to the studio. But other than that, um, I've just I've been working in my studio like as much as I can. Um, I'm in a I'm in a band and I do all this other stuff. So what kind of music? That's the kind of nice thing. Oh, we play uh, math rock. Uh, it's kind of like it's like uh, it's uh, a lot of people say it's like emo jazz. So it's like a lot of different time signature uh, changes, key switches, uh, tapping, and stuff like that. I don't know what any so of have, that means, but you said emo jazz. I'm in. I love jazz. <laughs> Yeah, it's it's fun to play. So we're we're in the local DIY scene, and we do like little tours. But because of COVID, uh, we haven't been able to practice as much. Uh, our studio that we practice at has, has been shut down. So I've used that time to get into my studio in the basement, um, and we haven't been able to hang out as, uh, with friends as much. So uh, it's just more time for me in my studio. Nice. So that's that's, that's been a lot. Nice. Tell me a little bit about the show that's coming up. Is this your first solo show? This is, I, well, kind of, I would say. Uh, it's my first, like, solo show at, like, I wouldn't say, like, legitimate gallery. I had a, um, a solo show last year. Uh, it was, like, a pop-up alternative, like, kind of space called uh, Galeria Obscura, run by 
uh, some local students at the community college nice. uh, and I helped them set it up and stuff. So that was, that was fun. But this is like my first like white wall gallery type solo show. Nice. What is it called? What is the show called? It's called, uh, Como Tu. It's based off of a poem, uh, by Robert Blanco. I'm pretty sure it was, it's a pretty interesting poem and I thought it was, uh, it worked well with the pieces. Wow. And how many pieces are you showing? Oh boy. Uh, probably close to 20, including wow. like collage. And stuff. So, that, yeah. That's fantastic. Congratulations on that. I'm excited. Thank you. And so you guys are able to like, uh, <laughs> to congregate like right now in St. Louis? Not really. We're kind of a hot spot right now, oh. I think. Um, so the show is, even though we're having like an opening, it's, to appointment only. Oh, cool. Uh, and there's also a virtual tour that's going to happen in the show. Oh, nice. Cool. What's your favorite piece in the show? Oh, man. Uh, I've got a couple. I like uh, La Lavandera that we were talking about earlier. Um, shoot. And, pro I mean, Cifue La Luz is always, like, a fun one. It's the one with, like, the light on. She's wearing the light on her head, and she's cooking. So those, those two, I think, I like a lot. Nice. What else do you uh, hope to explore with your work that you haven't yet? Um, so I've, I've explored being Nicaraguan. I think it wouldn't hurt to also, like, explore my other side, too, a little bit. Just, like, I'm, because I'm both, you know, it wouldn't hurt to explore being American or Irish American. I think I hint at it in this like current body of work, you know, with like made in USA stickers and poster stickers and stuff like that. Um, but it wouldn't hurt to kind of further go in that way. And I think also I might explore maybe like simplifying the figure a little bit more as well, like more collage in a, in a, in a way. So I think those are two things that I'm doing. Yeah. Well, I think it's very evident. Like, like I said, you bring the classic, uh, painting technique which is very european and then you bring in like these colors of latin america that, that you know that seem to pop up uh so it's really exciting um with the collage what is what is that process like for you because it's obviously different from painting what do you look for in your material and where do you source your material uh a lot of the materials at least that i've been using the past year or so have been from the uh the warehouse that i work at oh nice at a yeah, a framing, like an art framing warehouse. And so I get a lot of like, um, like stickers, like the Made in USA stickers and packing stickers, as well as like different prints that have, the, there's like some stuff or that they didn't get completely printed off. I use a lot of those for that. Uh, I also have some like fashion magazines that I've gotten for free. Um, there's a lot of cool like textures and stuff within like the clothing um, that's fun to use. And then uh, I've made some of the materials myself. So, like I, I mentioned before, like bean paper. What is that? Uh, I, I started doing that. Um, what's bean yeah. paper? <laughs> so I started doing this in like community college. Uh, it was like basically I take an archival paper and I throw uh, like red beans <laughs> on it. Yeah. yeah. And so over time, you know, like it'll dry. The the beans will fall off. You get all these like really cool things. And so you'll find that throughout my work, like these bean stained paper wow. within it. Is that something you kind that's, of created yourself or is that a technique that's, well, <laughs> wow, that's cool. Yeah. So that, yeah, that's been a lot of fun. So I do that in a lot of my work. Um, I've also done like coffee stained paper and hibiscus stained paper, mm. but the hibiscus stained paper doesn't always work as well. So. Wow. What was your first uh, exposure to art? Was it in the States or was it in um, Latin America and Nicaragua or, or what, what do you remember? Uh, my first exposure to art would probably was, was here definitely in St. Louis. We have a lot of really like great museums and I would say like 95% of them are like free. Wow. Which is really nice. Yeah. Um, which one's your favorite? My mom would take, uh, probably the contemporary art museum, but the St. Louis Art Museum is really good. It's got like, it's got tons of stuff there too. But the Contemporary Art Museum is probably my favorite just because it's like, 
it's all contemporary stuff, you know. So it's everything that's happening now. While the St. Louis Art Museum has, you know, like Renaissance stuff and all this other thing going on. But uh, yeah, I definitely like the St. Louis Art Museum was one that I got exposed to. And then my we when we moved up here from Nicaragua, uh, we lived with my grandparents on my mom's side. Uh, and my grandma went to art school. She went to Pratt for like a semester. Oh, wow. Here uh, in Brooklyn. Before, yeah. Yeah. So she went to Pratt uh, for like a semester before World War II and then became a, I think it was like a draftsman for tanks and stuff. So she would like draw the tanks out uh, and some people couldn't read. So she had to like make instructions, kind of like Ikea, like wow. stuff, instructions. So uh, I that was another exposure and she like we used to do like figure drawings when i was like five or six so that was that was fun and ever since then i wanted to be an artist so did your mom make art as well no she's a uh she well i mean she's an artist in a way she's she's a journalist so she's a writer um but she she stopped doing that after uh me and my sister were born we so she started teaching and stuff nice. so the, the artist side of the family is really on my mom's side, I would say. Wow. And your mom is from Nicaragua or is it your dad? Uh, my dad's from Nicaragua. Wow. My, yeah, my mom is mostly Irish American. That's where kind of my name comes from. Quinn is kind of a, yeah, that's not a very Latino name. <laughs> You'd be surprised. Um, are you familiar with uh, Lila Downs? She's a uh, very famous Mexican Irish American singer. No, I'm not. I'm yes. Yeah, so she's more. Uh, I guess she's more involved with the Latino side, with the Mexican side. So she, she's also an anthropologist, since she makes a lot of music that has a lot of influences from uh, indigenous uh, music, indigenous culture, but also does a lot with jazz and um, really great stuff. You should check her out. You just have a common yeah. thread. Does does some of that. Um, Nicaraguanists play out in your music as well? I think in a certain way. I mean, um, there's not always like uh, like a Latin beat or whatever, but I, um, I'm i not like really trained in, in music at all. And so I kind of just like let like a nice beat kind of go throughout it. So um, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't really say it does. I, I think at some point I would like to... Uh, combine the two i just haven't figured that out yet that's awesome um, yeah yeah what's the name of your band young, young animals ah that's a great name that's fantastic <laughs> that's so cool um what are you reading right now what's inspiring you what's what's moving you so i'm reading uh life is hard by roger <laughs> lancaster you are emo uh, <laughs> yeah uh, <laughs> Uh, it's uh, it's like a case study uh, in the '80s in Nicaragua. Oh, so uh, it's pretty interesting. Uh, and then I just uh, finished reading Open Veins of Latin America. Yeah, that was pretty interesting as well. Uh, pretty eye opening. So a lot of different things. So I have a really hard time reading these academic historic books because it's really painful, and then it makes me kind of. Uh, I don't want to say jaded. I am in New York, but it, it almost makes me feel like, damn, I, I kind of need to use this as a platform, but not get too involved in, in, the, in the pain, right? Or in this, this legacy. How do you cope with that? I cope with it. So I read it like bit by bit. Um, I'll try to read it at work. Like I have two 15 minute breaks. So I'll, you know, I'll read for 15 minutes, nice. 30 minutes altogether a day. So that's, that's yeah. why I, I think if I tried to just like sit down and read it for a couple hours, I, I couldn't do it. Yeah. So I just like take time. <laughs> That's smart. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, a lot of artists feel the need to, you know, move to big cities. And I know things have shifted now with post COVID, but do you feel the need that you have to leave St. Louis to go to either LA or New York to one of the coast cities? I, I do. Um, and I think I would like to try it out sometime, but being in St. Louis is not like a terrible thing. Um, we have, I mean, like we have like a decent art community. It's not super big because we're like a small, big city. Sure. Um, yeah. 
and we're like only four hours from Chicago, so it's not too bad. Um, but yeah, I do feel the the at least like the want to go. Um, and I have like I studied at San Francisco Art Institute for my BFA, uh, so I have been on the coast. Uh, not it was only for two years because I went to community college before that, but uh, I, I would like to try out the East Coast or maybe go back to the West Coast at some point. But I'm okay with right here for right now. What was that like? That in contrast, San Francisco to St. Louis. It was <laughs> well, I loved it, but it was like it was very different. Um, I think. I mean, I, this is, I was living like directly in the city and before I was like living in the county. It was like very different. Um, I think there's like a, li a lot more openness to San Francisco than St. Louis uh, and like willingness to just do whatever. Um, as well as there's like, there seemed to be like a, not like a grind to it, but not, I mean, I, I know New York has like a super grind, like you have to get down and uh, grind. But San Francisco, just because like the high rent and stuff, you had to like have multiple jobs and do that. Um, that's why I couldn't stay. <laughs> really. Yeah. Well, I don't know. I think it's really crazy. I don't know where it came from. This this notion. I mean, I know there's crazy galleries here, but it is virtually impossible for an artist to be in a great frame of mind and make work. You know, because like you said, you're constantly grinding. You're constantly having to worry about rent. Um, it's, it's a difficult place to, to thrive, really, especially now, post-COVID. Yeah. It's, it's, uh, it's, a, it's a mess, really, but like the rest of the country, I, I guess. Um, but that's interesting. Did you get to experience an earthquake while you were in San Francisco? I think, not really. I think I slept <laughs> through one. Um, so I got kind of lucky. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, they're no fun. Um, well, in closing, can you... You know, I, I think there's two parts to being an artist, right? The really creative part and being just free and, and, and just exploring, right? And then there's a the technique. And I see that you have a really great balance in your work between these two. Can you give a budding artist some advice on how to achieve that balance? Um, I, can, I can do my best, I guess. Um, so I think, a, like someone trying to achieve this should really just like go f with their like first instinct mm. and just kind of like go with that. Um, and I think with each like work that you make, see what works and what doesn't. And so like continuously, you'll just like build up different work, see how it continues to, to grow. And I think that's like the best way to do it. Um, cause like I said before, like all my paintings were like really thin and now they're getting thicker. So it's just like a constant growth. Um, and with me, I just have to, like personally, just cause of the way I am, I have to like keep working. Um, if I don't, I kind of get like depressed after like, a couple of weeks to be honest. Yeah. But like if I keep working, the work progresses and the work gets better. And each from each painting or each collage or whatever, it just, each thing gets better each time. So I think learning from those mistakes is, is like a really good way to go. And just like keeping a sketchbook and like writing down what works and what doesn't. So. That's great advice. And, and make music, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> there you go. Well, Quinn, I appreciate your time and I'm really excited about your work. Good luck in your show. Great. Thank you. Thanks for having me on. Absolutely.